This just looks so dodgy. <laughs> Hi guys, Annabelle here from Horizon Cosplay and today we're going to be making something a bit different. Now, as you guys might notice, the name of this channel is Horizon Cosplay and a little while ago I basically just started doing fashion-y and historical fashion things and I don't know, I've just kind of felt a little bit stuck for inspiration recently which is funny because I've been churning out projects all over the place but finding something I'm seriously passionate about, well, the last thing would probably be my cream egg dress if I'm honest, and that's just because I love cream eggs. However, the other day I was browsing the internet and I came across a couple of pictures which involved a lot of book pages. As it happens, me and Ben recently had a clear out and essentially what we've decided is that I need to read a bunch of books and then get rid of them because we have way too many and it's a little bit ridiculous. And while I was going through these books, I decided to pick up this series. This is a series I got in a charity shop a while ago. It is the first three books in the Goddesses of Parthenon series, Sexy Centaurs, anyone? I have read all three of these and they're pretty damn good. And I was just gonna give them to a charity shop. And then I realized they all match in size and page color, which means I have a lot of pages to work with here. A lot of pages that I could do anything with, including make a dress. Because why dream about being in a book when you can literally be in a book by wearing it. So the plan is we are going to draft a pattern. I only have one day left of my time off this week so we're going to draft a pattern, we're going to get it cut out today hopefully, maybe start sewing the fabric side of things and then during the week we're going to take these apart and next weekend I've allocated four days to putting this entire dress together. I'm a little bit scared, I haven't ever done anything like this before. I'm not 100% sure how to go about it and I don't really have a design in mind. These books do have a couple hundred pages each, so we've got over a thousand pages to work with. We're going to make a fabric base and we're going to try and make this wearable and so that it's actually going to last. So we'll see what we can do about that. I need to do some brainstorming for what I want. I think I'm just going to duct tape myself up and hope for the best because that's kind of how I work with these things. And so we don't have any, as Makara Chews would say, demonetization bait. Not like this channel's monetized anyway, but what can you do? I'm gonna be covering my boobs with duct tape under the pattern because the bra I'm wearing is a little bit see-through. There, YouTube, you can't see my nipples. You happy now? When making the pattern for this dress, I did it by duct taping myself up. I was by myself this time because Ben was away visiting family, so it was really, really hard, but soon enough we got going and I had drawn the pattern. This then got taken to the ironing board where any gaps were filled in with extra tape. I drew on the back as I couldn't really reach that while I was wearing it, and once it was all cut out I was rather happy as it looked really, really good. But before I could use it we had one more thing to do and that was to trace it out onto paper and add seam allowance. Now I didn't add any seam allowance on the top and bottom, only the sides. I also planned on installing a side zip, again because Ben was away so I needed to be able to get in and out of this myself which sadly meant no lace up back which if you guys don't know is one of my favorite things. These then got labeled and cut out giving me a paper pattern with which to start this project with. This pattern by the way is now available on my Ko-Fi. Just because this project was a little bit expensive, I mean have you guys seen the price of glue recently, I am asking one pound for each download but that is for the whole dress and if you do get it and make it please make sure you send me pictures I so want to see what you all create. Okay, so we have our pattern and I am very, very excited. Now, this is just the pattern for the bodice. The skirt, I'm gonna wing it a little bit. I've got in my mind what I want, but I haven't 100% decided yet, which is why I haven't drafted anything because also I need to make sure this fits really before we go out any further with the project. If you can't tell, it's the end of the day. I have not got nearly as much done as I planned because, well, I hate to say it, it's um, just been one of those days where my mind just keeps wandering off to other things. Kidding! Now the next step of the project is going to be to make a mock-up. Now I had actually run out of mock-up fabric so I actually went to the shops the other day where I got this, several of these actually, and they're these really nice yellow and blue curtains and it's going to cut them up to mock-up. I've actually decided I'm going to make an actual outfit with this which is a Snow White Disney bound. Not sure which of these videos is coming out first so I'll link it up here or actually I think here if the video is released. However, the back of the curtains, as much as the yellow is gorgeous, is this lovely cream, which, one moment, pretty much perfectly matches the book pages, so I'm a bit ecstatic about that. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to use this as my actual fabric, but also I've got enough of it that I can make the mock-up as well, especially because as it is a duct tape pattern, I am fairly confident it's gonna fit first try, so touch wood, wish me luck there. But to be able to use it, we first must 
unpick. And just in case you guys are wondering, this is the distraction that I've had sat just out of the camera shot for that entire segment. Who's a cute little ginger kitty cat? You're the real star of the show, aren't you, Sherlock? I mostly got to tear the curtain apart. But a little unpicking did take place. Unfortunately, I didn't really get any further with it until after I started work, taking every moment I could just to do one little thing a day, be it ironing one curtain, pinning the pattern pieces together, cutting out what I could, and then, of course... I mean, this is not an update that I ever thought I'd put in a vlog, but I'm not overly surprised in hindsight because cats. I've just come down to, um dead creatures on my fabric so if you don't want to see them do look away for a moment so yes there's two dead birds directly on the fabric that i'm using for my dress so now we have to clean that up you can look back now so um yeah that's gonna be fun hopefully they haven't stained the fabric because i don't want to wash it again so um rather than actually progressing on the project i'm going to have to clean up corpses of dead i think it's a pair of robins i hate cats like i love cats i love my cats but I hate them when they do this the next day we got a delivery a giant box of pva glue anyone bets on now about how much of this i'm going to use up please excuse the hair piece it's some scrap fabric i had lying around and due to the uk actually having a heat wave yes that's right an actual heat wave you did not hear me incorrectly i just needed something to keep the hair off the back of my neck once once the test bodice was pinned, I gave it a stitch before pinning on the zip I was planning to use on the dress and trying it on. Okay, so this is the mock-up, but I'm actually going to use it as the lining for the top of the dress. For a lining, it's really, really good. You can see there's a lot of wrinkles in it, but I think that's just because it doesn't have any boning. If I press it out like it will do in a moment, that should be fine. have had to increase the seam allowance just at these two side seams here just so that it shapes around my boobs a little bit more it's snug it's going to be a corset i don't want it to be too tight because i do need a zipper to hold it together we are going to make sure to put a hook and eye there but overall i'm actually really really happy with this i think that that would be a win i was hoping to start doing the book covers tomorrow putting all the books on the fabric it's currently 11 o'clock at night not sure it's going to happen but i still don't see any reason why we can't get it done this weekend definitely not too bad the only pre-made boning channels i had were bright lime green and because i wasn't sure how see-through the top layer was going to be i trimmed the edge of the curtain to create some more that would actually match the fabric i'm already using i then went through and ironed all the seams pressing them to one side before pinning on the extra boning channels and folding over any excess seams that were wide enough to use. I then cut out the pieces for the front of the bodice as I wasn't really in a sewing mood anymore before pinning them all together ready for the morning. With the front I actually left the centre front top piece unpinned as I had plans for this particular piece which meant it would have to wait until after the pages were attached to be sewn onto the main part of the corset. Okay ignore the headgear it is another blazing hot day here in the apparently tropical UK <laughs> and I am at the moment avoiding hairbands for well essentially I have had some problems with my hair falling out and this is the best solution we can find along with some supplements to help that stop happening is that I just don't tie or plait my hair up pretty much ever now unless like I really really have to so weird headband it is i'll make a proper one at some point this has definitely made me realize i need one but back on to the subject which is we have to make a dress today now the plan for today had originally been that today was going to be the day that i attached all the pages to the fabric however i cannot attach the pages until the dress is made one of the things i was struggling with last night and one of the reasons i stayed up till two in the morning again if you want to see more of my late night escapades do hit that subscribe button so yeah, one of the reasons I stay up to two in the morning is that I just couldn't decide what I wanted to do with the skirt. On one hand, I was like, well, circle skirt sounds nice. And then I was like, oh, let's make it off center because I don't know, the vibe I'm getting from this idea is that it needs to be a little bit messy. And then I kind of just did some Googling. And so I have discovered, well, I say I've discovered, I have found various ideas for square or diamond shaped skirt. And I think I rather like those. What I've done is I've got these two images here and we're essentially going to combine them. So we're going to do a square where none of the sides are even and then we're going to add a ruffle of fabric along the bottom and possibly some lace i was thinking about using this lace which i used a lot of for my victorian petticoat however i'm unsure how much i've got left or if it will be enough i do have some white lace but i just don't feel white is a particularly good color here now because i don't fancy sewing right this second i think we should start with taking the books apart this morning also because i can do that while i eat breakfast and the plan is to beat the heat of the sunny day and get out there by about 10 i think should give me enough time to 
at least get all the pages attached to the bodice today hopefully the bodice and the skirt even if i have to leave it outside to dry for the night luckily the weather forecast is quite good so i'm not too worried about that and with that i suppose we should get going cheers i got super lucky here as ben had recently picked up this industrial heat gun which worked a treat to soften the book binding glue i heated the spine to remove the cover before softening the edges of each page into small batches pulling them apart when the glue became soft enough the first book went a little slow but after that we were honestly flying and soon enough i had an entire container of loose pages to craft with i then got stitching on the machine to create those boning channels i did this super carefully and kept checking with the boning that it would fit in the spaces i was making because i so didn't want to have to restitch this next up was the front of the dress this took a little working on as i had forgotten to note down the changes i'd made to the seam allowance but we got there in the end I didn't worry about overlocking the edges as there's going to be a lot of glue here and it will hopefully soak through to keep everything held together and in place so why should I waste the thread? Once it was done I took it over to the ironing board, pressed the seams and trimmed them down. I then pressed the lining again, trimming down any excesses from the boning channels and got a good pair of scissors that were not my good fabric scissors and started rounding off the edges of the boning, inserting them as I went and giving each piece a pair of nice hand stitches at either end to help hold them in place. This is a new thing I'm experimenting with, I'm not sure how it will affect the final dress but I'll let you guys know when it's done. I also got a bit annoyed at constantly having to retie my scrap fabric so I sewed a quick long hoop out of some other scrap as I really didn't want to get all glue and paint in my hair when we got to the next stage of this project. Whew, that's a bit better. Right, now that my hair's not going to get covered in glue and paint let's show you where we're at. Bodice, under layer, has all the boning in, it's stitched in, need to attach the front and the back. However, I'm kind of holding off on that just for a moment because I want to do the skirt first and attach the skirt to the base. I am kind of thinking maybe I'll just base these along the top and then what I'm going to do is once the book pages are on, I'm going to do binding and obviously we need to insert this bit which will be there later on because that's getting a bit of extra decoration. However, come to my kitchen please. There has been some exciting stuff going on here. So, one thing that I was concerned about is that the book pages would look too flat. You know, I'm going to layer them and jumble them together a bit. So I came up with the idea that I have this metallic gold paint, which I actually got for free off the Facebook Marketplace. It's supposed to be wall paint, it's called Millionaire by Clown, and I decided to do some testing. I also tested another paint, this is like some hobby paint that I had, and it's perfect colour, but it just doesn't splatter, and we want splatters. So, this is the one that we've got from the wallpaper. The stuff around the bottom was just me cleaning my paintbrush, but the splatters have come out really well. They looked a bit brown when they weren't on, so I was 50-50, but now that they've dried, they're gold shimmery absolutely perfect for what we need this is a little bit dark though and because it is a little bit dark i'm going to try mixing some light gold mica powder that i have in i actually got this for ben to do resin casting and we've never actually done any and i have loads and loads of this stuff uh, this is the lightest gold that i have so i'm just going to mix a little bit of it in see if i can lighten it up just a tad and maybe give it a bit of extra shimmer but before i do anything else i'm gonna cook myself some food because it's that kind of day and i'm hungry so yeah let's do that and then on with the project. The next step was to pin the top and underside together. I then cut out some binding for the base of the corset and the top of it and went to pin it on before realizing that I actually kind of needed to attach the skirt first. So I laid out the last bit of iron fabric and got out some rulers. Like I mentioned before, we're going to go for something a little different in a square skirt with every side being a different length. I measured out each point before getting out the scissors. Each side was cut and I wasn't going to make a mock up here so I'm hoping this is going to work out first time. So I measured the length of the bottom of the bodice, added two centimeters to give me some excess with which to attach the zip and cut out the center. Putting it over my head, I gave it a try on and was happy with how it was looking so far, though somehow I definitely cut the hole too big. Done, but it's nothing we can't work with. Okay, so not going to lie, I took a little nap. So half the day has disappeared, but to be fair, I only got like four hours sleep last night. So yeah, I'm not too upset about it. Now, I do need to attach the top and the bottom of the bodice together. However, before I do that, I have some names from Ko-Fi that I need to embroider on. And I just want to say a massive thank you to the people who have donated, either by buying something from the shop or just outright donations. We are going to restore this lovely sewing machine and I'm quite looking forward to it. It is a bit of an expensive project. And to be fair, I have started gathering the supplies. So hopefully it's something that I can share with you guys soon. If you do want to support the channel, the Ko-Fi is going to be linked down below. Also, you'll notice that we're going for a bit of a rebranding at the moment. So Horizon Cosplay is, well, I wouldn't say no more. I'm going to keep it as a business name. 
but this channel has kind of expanded. This book dress is not cosplay, but it's certainly an antic that I am very much enjoying. So the new channel name is officially Annabelle and Ben's Antics, and by the time this video comes out, I think all the rebranding should have been done. <laughs> Fingers crossed anyway. So new links to the Ko-Fi are down below if you want to donate. I will very much appreciate it and every person who donates, no matter how big or small the donation is, gets their name sewn onto the next project, which is what we are about to do. Our donors today who have made this project possible are Asienda? One moment, how do I pronounce that? Hacienda. And Howlitz Art. Here are your names being embroidered into the lining of the dress in the brightest gold that I can find. I'm also considering what other rewards I can give people on Ko-Fi by the way, but I haven't come up with too many ideas. So if any of you can think of anything, please make sure you leave them in the comments down below. Oh, and again, the sewing pattern for this dress is available over there, so head over if you want it to make your own. There was also an anonymous donation, and whoever you are, thank you. It really means the world to me when people support my work, and I cannot wait to continue growing the community. Talking of community, we also have a lovely Discord server where I share a lot of my projects while I make them. And considering that I sometimes make things a month or so in advance before the videos go live, it's a great place to stay up to date with what's coming up. So this lace that I was thinking of using, I've just measured it around the outside of the skirt and around everywhere that I want to use it on the bodice, and I think I just have enough, literally give or take a couple of centimetres, which is great because it means I get to finish this, which I really like, and I don't have to store it anymore because I have an outfit to wear it with. However, I have a bit of an issue, which is that I want to go see Thor Love and Thunder, which is showing in about 45 minutes at my local cinema. So I've decided that as it is my days off, I will treat myself, go to the movies, come back, and then finish off the last few things I have to do for today, ready for a day of sticking book pages on tomorrow. With the top of the bodice done, I started to pin the skirt. Unfortunately, I had cut the waist seam way, way too big. However, I managed to fold the excess back on itself and am basically going to use the zip like a dart to get back to the proper shape. The skirt was stitched on and then I pinned on the zipper. This proved to be super hard and though it did get done, it then got sewn and well, um... This has to be one of the worst zippers I have ever done, but luckily all my messy stitching will be covered over with book pages, so we're just gonna roll with it for now. Welcome to the midnight sewing session, and it's official, the base of the dress is done, the zipper's in, I've still left a long bit up the top, but I'm gonna leave that there until after everything is stuck on. The zipper's a little bit janky, not gonna lie, definitely not the neatest installation I've ever done, but because I had to kind of dart it out to take up the excess fabric from where I cut the waist seam too wide, so to self, if in doubt, cut it half the size you think and then gradually expand it out because that would have been a useful thing to do. However, like I said, we're sticking book pages on, it's all going to get covered up so I'm not actually that fussed. Overall, I love the shape, this corset is amazing. I am actually 110% going to be making another one of these. It's it, I put a lot more boning in it than I would normally do with corsets and I put the boning in very different places. There I've got the front V here which goes up, I've got two little ones, got the centre front. There's just a lot but it's so supportive that I'm very happy about it, essentially. <laughs> I love it. What do you guys think so far? I think the skirt's amazing. I've never done a square skirt before, but I have to say I am absolutely loving this. And the fact that it's lopsided as well, I think suits it perfectly. Before I headed off to bed, I got some tape and taped over the inside of the V in the chest so that the edges wouldn't accidentally get stuck down tomorrow. I then got some clear tape to cover the zip with so it also doesn't get glued shut. And after that, it was time to follow Sherlock's example and go take a nap. Good morning everyone, I am in a very good mood, though I gotta be honest I didn't get loads of sleep last night because I was too excited for this project. Now, I'm currently having breakfast, watching Alexandra Louise's book page dress video for some inspiration. Now my original plan had been to kind of stuff this with bags and then have it set up right, but I don't think that's really gonna work. So what I've done is I've just run upstairs and grabbed my dressmaker's dummy and I need to set her up and then what I'm going to do is just put a plastic bin liner over the top of her so that she doesn't get all damaged and kind of hope for the best with that really. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine anyway and I do need her set up for my next project that I'm doing after this so really it's just killing two birds with one stone but let's get that, let's get the dress on it and then we can get set up all outside. I adjusted the mannequin so that the dress fit it comfortably before putting a plastic bag over the top to prevent it from being ruined by all the glue and paint we were about to use. Then it was time to head outside and set everything up for the day. 
I started by lying an old painter's blanket that normally gets used as a cat bed. I actually had to flip it because of the amount of cat hair on the other side. I then set out a row of book pages right next to each other so that hopefully any splatter would just get onto the next page and it would not be wasted. I had planned to use one coin on each book page in order to hold them down but as soon as the wind blew it became obvious that one coin was not nearly enough so I upped it to three and split a few cork boards in half to hold more. Then I took the mica powder and mixed a small spoonful into the gold paint. This worked wonderfully and lightened it up the perfect amount without interfering with the consistency which had been something I was really worried about. I then took my large brush and tried to splatter but it just wasn't working. My theory here is that the brush is simply too soft and so we reverted back to the other one. This worked better but again the splatter just weren't looking great. In the end I grabbed my chopsticks and started hitting the brush onto it which definitely worked better but the coverage was still not quite what I was looking for. Okay, so this is the first row. I was hoping for a little bit more paint splatter, but I actually quite like how subtle it is. And also I don't think it's going to get any better than this, so we're just going to roll with it and do some more. We carried on setting out another row of pages and working through those before deciding that we really needed to do something about how this looked. Taking the bodice fabric, I pleated several pages large enough to cover it. It took a few tries to get them perfect. My aim is for the pleats to be uneven, but not too uneven if you know what I mean. These were then held down by a cork dinner placemat while I went to town splattering them with gold. This did take quite a while, however soon enough I was quite happy with the result and completely covered in gold paint. Does all this gold mean that I'm going to fade into gold dust just like a god? Off camera I went for an individually splattered each page. This was incredibly time consuming, but I liked how it came out so much that well, I guess that's what we're doing from now on. Okay, so I have individually splattered every one of the pages and they are now looking absolutely how I wanted them to. I have gone over the pleats for the front again, meaning extra gold, and my hands now look like I have been sprinkled in fairy dust. What I'm going to do while these dry, definitely not enough for the whole dress, but probably enough to do a good chunk as I'm going to focus on that. We have some glue, we're going to get some water, and I'm going to mix up some homemade Mod Podge. To make homemade Mod Podge, you need two parts glue and one part water. In order to get this correct, I measured a jar and marked the lines where the PVA and water needed to go. Putting in glue, then water, then more glue and then gave it a good old shake. This just looks so dodgy. <laughs> At this point, the first few pages were so dry, I decided to take the plunge and selected a page to start with at the back of the dress. After a few pages, it became rather obvious that I couldn't just leave the skirt hanging as the pages were peeling off the skirt and it kept sticking to itself. So I grabbed the wooden base of another of my dressmaker's dummies to hold it up. This would also help the breeze blow through and hopefully get it drying quicker. What's your opinion of the dress, girly bear? Now, for a hot moment there, I actually wasn't too sure that this was even gonna work. But I love what I have done so far. That looks utterly amazing, better than what I thought it would look like. I'm hoping the pages won't be so see-through once the glue dries, but we'll see if they are. It's not a big deal. It's kind of cool that you can see the layers of pages. So what I'm going to do is, this is an old dressmaker's dummy stand. I'm just going to move it around the different edges. For now, we're going to come around and do this side. And then once that's done, we'll let it dry and then gradually shuffle around. The other change I'm going to make is I'm definitely going to stay outside of the stitch line for the zip because there's no way this is going to work otherwise. Girly Bear is currently judging my artwork. Oh, and if you're wondering how I decide which page goes where, I pick a space, see which page flies away in the wind, and then I stick that one on next. Because I'm not going anywhere today and it is incredibly hot, I decided to treat myself to a very large whiskey and coke. Alcohol is supposed to help with artistic expression after all. Then we got going on the other side of the skirt. Now I intentionally didn't get too close to where the fabric was folded as I didn't want the line there to look unnatural. I did try to film it but the camera battery ran out. Definitely looking good. I am finding that with the top pages these corners tend to come loose if there's nothing over the top of them. That's absolutely fine once it's past the waistline because that's going to get sewn on top. At the moment it's a bit annoying, but I think we're just going to have to roll with it, let it dry and it'll be fine. It's kind of getting dry. I think by the time I've painted some more pages this section will be good and then we can do this bit up here which is still plain and then move round. I want to do the front last because I want to save the best pages for that and also, you know, have the most practice. <laughs> I'm trying to put every page at a slightly different angle with the only kind of thing is that the writing is facing up which so far is working out very well. I have on this side had to tear a few pages just from the bottom where it was hanging just to fill in a few gaps where I unintentionally made some 
but it's nothing that I think people are particularly going to notice. I have made the decision at the bodice, so whereas the skirt is going to be made up of full pages, the bodice is going to be made up of torn pages, so it's going to be really collagey, and then that will make the front bit stand up even more. Certainly I like how it's going so far, so let's do some more painting. I began by laying out all the pages before painting them. This was going well and certainly it was a lot faster now that I had actually figured out every page had to be done individually and I basically had to work on it until it was done and then move on. And then of course it all went wrong. Well this complicates things a little bit. I think I'm gonna see if I can get some duct tape and stick it back together because well the other paintbrush just doesn't really work very well and now it's covered in Mod Podge that I'd rather keep it for that. So let's try and duct tape this and see what we can wrangle. So my solution to the problem is the last of my duct tape and a stick either side of the uh, brush so that hopefully it'll keep it strong. So I carried on but it wasn't long before it really really broke. At that point I went for a rummage in my house and found another much smaller but happy to be sacrificed paintbrush that unfortunately meant the pages did take a little longer to do. It also gave a slightly different effect but it did look really nice so I'm not going to complain about that because now we have a variety of different splatter patterns. I then rearranged the now dry skirt so I could begin on the other sections. Now I am sure there is probably quite a few of you writing in the comments as I speak about how I am a terrible and disgraceful human being to have destroyed so many books and you know what I have to say to that darling it's for art but no seriously these books have been well loved and well used heck I made sure to read them before I even considered making this project and no normally I would not condone the destruction of books however when it's done for a dress that I think I'm really going to love I have no problem with it <laughs> though I will admit that at this point I realized three books was possibly a little excessive for my project <laughs> the gluing was going well though right up until I spilled the jar and then had to remake another of Mod Podge Alright, so the skirt is just about done. It's looking really, really good. I've only got this tiny section here to do, but I can't do that until this front panel dries. So while that's drying, I am going to pile up all the pages. I think I've got too many, which is good. I certainly haven't used maybe a third of the pages that I took apart from books. So you guys have another idea for a book dress, let me know because yeah, I have a lot of pages that I should use up. I'll also put the Mod Pod recipe in the description box just in case anyone else needs it for anything that you're working on at the moment. It'll be right under the link for my Ko-Fi shop where you can download the dress pattern. I'm also definitely going to make a fabric version of this dress just because I love it so much and honestly doesn't it just look great? <laughs> Thankfully cleaning up everything I was no longer using didn't take too long. I even got to sort through the coins, UK ones in one jar and my odd mix of foreign coins in the other. Then I took a short break to finish letting the skirt dry before returning to my mission. The last part of the skirt was tacked very quickly and I'm happy to say that the entire thing looked very cohesive and you couldn't even really see any obvious joins of the different sections that I'd worked on. Once that was done I moved straight onto the bodice and that means tearing up some pages. Starting from the back I worked my way around collaging the torn up pieces to look good, making sure to use as much of the gold as possible. I did this because though I wanted the bodice to match the skirt, I just didn't feel the effect of full pages up here would actually look that good. This came together really quickly all of a sudden. Certainly, I'm not sure I would have liked to arrange so many small pieces on the skirt, but for the bodice, which was a relatively small area, it was a very effective way of doing things, especially because I could fit different pieces to different areas. Also, because the pieces weren't too big, I really, really enjoyed this part most out of the whole process. Well guys, this is it. She is all dry. The skirt is a lot stiffer than I was anticipating, but it's glue and paper, so you know, what was I expecting? I do think she looks rather damn good though. I think I just need to insert a few folds in various places just to help it lay nice. But as we can see, she is nice and crunchy. There's a few little bubbles, mostly like around this area. Waist obviously needs to be hand stitched down and the zipper area is particularly not great which is oh yeah here you go it's just kind of gaped open which is fine because I can you know pull it across and I'm gonna have to stitch it down but I'm gonna do that after we've attached all the waist seam to help keep everything up top in place but no overall I don't think she's turned out all that bad I do think all the tiny bits of torn up paper was a good choice at the top as well it makes it look different from the bottom but not so different that you can't tell they're part of the same outfit this still needs to be inserted it is just down there it's still a little bit damp but I think it's gold enough that it's going to contrast nicely I might just do something along these edges just to 
help frame it a little bit better but overall I do like the pleats so shiny for wall paint this stuff is really good need to keep that in mind for future projects really so every time I was researching book page dresses they always said I never had enough book pages well I think three books was a little bit much I think I've maybe used half of one and I painted an extra like 100 pages so uh yeah any ideas for more book page dresses let me know because I've got all that to use up now also as a side note the one place that I forgot sun cream was like the top side of my arm so I now look like I have some really dodgy rash Getting the scrap silk, I gave it a long thin piece and iron. Unfortunately it did end up being a bit thinner than I anticipated, but it was nothing I couldn't make work. I then took the, let's call it, bias binding and pinned it into place around the V on the bodice, inserting lace at the same time. Then came out the hand sewing needles. The only gold thread I had was the colour changing stuff, but I didn't mind that as it's also very very strong and we got sewing. Making sure to puncture the lining, the V, the lace and the outside paper and the bias binding, so six layers in total. and. Oh god, my back was hurting by the end of this, and yes, of course Sherlock was helping by examining the underside of the dress. Okay, so I didn't film it because honestly after yesterday I was utterly exhausted, but what I have just done is gone along the zipper and also either side of the zipper where the pages haven't stuck to the fabric, and I've just patched it. You can see this piece here where there was like a really big tear, and I've just taken torn up pieces of pages and just stuck them down essentially just to try and help seal it all together. Now, I don't really want to work on sewing up the waistline until all of that's dry. So while that's drying, I'm gonna get going on something a little bit different. Once those pieces were dried, I took a break from making my waistcoats to base the top of the skirt. I tried to vary where I placed my stitches rather than just going in a straight line as I thought this would help the paper to hold the weight. Then, to make double sure it was all secure, I got my Mod Podged and tore up some more pages and attached them over the top of the stitches, hoping that this would help hold them and fuse them into the skirt even more. Unfortunately, as I had to leave it to dry, I only had enough time to do one side that night, but I plan to chip away at this project little by little after work all of next week. And there I was thinking that this would be done in a weekend. Is anyone surprised this is taking longer than expected? The next day I came home and did exactly the same thing on the other side, basting the skirt to the waistline or the top of the skirt, and then gluing some half pages over the stitches to help hold them in place and give them a little bit more strength. Carrying on with the theme of doing one small thing a day for this project, the day after I ironed my leftover silk and cut it into strips to use as binding around the base of the skirt. These were then ironed with the insides folded in. So I just thought I'd show you guys how I actually normally make my bias strips so I don't have one of those fancy bias binding makers, instead I just take some pins, I stab them through the cover of my ironing board onto the other side so that there's a gap, fold the insides in, pull it across, and then the idea is I put the iron here, as it irons, I pull this through, and then it stays in position making bias strips, and they become very beautiful like this, and I can use them on any project. So with these I am going to go over them again and just iron them in half to make my life a tiny bit easier. But that's a job for later. Before attaching the bias strips I decided to attach the area around the zip. I started with the upper bodice making sure not to sew all the way down to the bottom before moving on to the skirt. It immediately made the skirt 10 times better, but to make those stitches extra secure I tore up and cut in a few half pages using my homemade Mod Podge and glued them on. The next day before work I got those bias strips and ironed them all in half. Okay, so this is what the zip looks like now. It's dry. It's definitely a lot better. There's not all the gaping. It's a lot neater. There's still a little bit of flappiness just along the solid edge. However, look at that. Massive improvement. The pages that I've put on the side just to cover up the stitches as well have blended in really, really nicely. It's maybe a little bit thicker around here than was obvious. So in the future, I think, you know, because I did try and patch it out with extra pages and have sewn through the patched up pages to do it through there, I would have just sewed it, stuck it on and gone through that. But overall really really like it i like the fact i cut out the bottom of the zip from one page so that's nice and neat and tidy there are a few wrinkles where i've had to add extra pages particularly noticeable at the front here but honestly i like it i'm happy and now we are going to try and pin all the binding that we need and i actually forgot to cut out some extra binding for the top because that stuff needs to be a little bit thicker than pretty much anything else i'm using on this dress but I think that's what we're going to do last because for the moment I need to measure out and make sure we've got enough lace 
for everything else. I actually really enjoyed pinning all the bias strips onto the dress and for the first time I could really see what it was going to look like which is amazing by the way, it's going to look utterly amazing. Okay, so I've just finished pinning everything and I love the bottom of the skirt, the gold and the lace is perfect. Obviously this bit up here we've already sewn, the only thing I need to do is top binding, which we'll do that tomorrow. I'm not sure about the lace on the waist, I think it's a bit too much. I like the frills, but I think that with it there and at the bottom it's perfect and if I give this a pull out, I just think that for this in one instance, less is more and it draws the line to the bust and it draws the line to the base and then this lovely gold point just kind of gives it some shape yeah okay that's what we're gonna do we're gonna leave the lace off the waist which is a shame because otherwise i would have used up the entire thing but is fine we will work on it and thus began nearly a week of hand stitching a lot of this i didn't film simply because it was so many hours it is actually insane i worked on this dress every day after work for nearly a week and by the weekend it still wasn't done and maybe that's because i wasn't feeling well so it'd been sewing slower or maybe it's because it is just a hell of a lot of work i am really not sure however we carried on and we did eventually get it done and then at long last the stitching was complete meaning that we can finally have the grand reveal Now remember, if you guys like this dress, the sewing pattern for it is available to download on my Ko-Fi. And this dress has to be one of the most complicated dresses that I have ever completed. It took sewing, patterning, painting, making my own Mod Podge, essentially paper mashing book pages onto the dress to make it all come together. And really that the hours I put into it, I'm not 100% sure because I didn't actually time myself, but it must be over 100 at least because Oh my gosh, this literally took me like two weeks to make and I was working on it every spare moment I had. But I suppose the real question is, are the results worth it? I'll let you guys have the final say, but in my opinion, the answer is definitely a yes. It's certainly one of the most unique things I've ever made. And in my opinion, one of the most beautiful. It honestly looks like something you'd see at one of those weird fashion runway shows, which is it practical for everyday use? No, probably not. Is it good looking? Yes, do I know when I would wear this in real life? No, I will be honest, no. It's also completely made out of recycled materials, old curt lining for the base, then we've got secondhand books for the top, paint that I got for free secondhand off the Facebook marketplace that was half used, and all the lace and silk were all scraps left over from past projects. So yeah, I think I love it. But what would I do different next time if I made it again? Well, for one thing, I honestly don't think the square skirt was my best idea. I think a circle skirt would have laid to look nicer and given it a better shape. The square one just kind of has a lot of very odd folds in it, which is a look, but it's just not one that I'm 100% on board with. I also think that I'd stick the pages to the fabric before I began sewing. Having to paper mache them onto essentially a 3D object made it way harder than it needed to be, and had I paper mache all the fabric before cutting out all my pattern pieces, I think that probably would have worked a little bit better. Not to mention that it would have helped greatly with all the patching I had to do around the zip and the waistline because it was just gaping in those areas and didn't want to stick. I think if I paper mache them flat we would never have had that problem which also would have saved me a hell of a lot of time and materials. And then there's the fact that this dress was fine when I was doing the grand reveal of it. However, unfortunately since it's been sitting around my dress mannequin for a little while, it started to crack. Now I'm honestly not sure what I could do to prevent this or exactly what's causing it. And sadly if it can't even take being left on the dressmaker's mannequin for a week or so, I'm not sure how it's going to be being stored, which means that this is a dress I don't think I'm going to be keeping for very long. However, I have made the decision that if this dress is something you guys are interested in, please do drop me a message on Discord or Instagram just to say whether you'd like it. I'll put my measurements in the description down below, and if you guys are willing to pay postage, I will happily send this to someone for free. I don't know what you'd wear it to, whether it'd be a wedding guest, a prom dress, I'm actually very unsure, but you know what, I, I'm sure someone would find a use for it somewhere, just be prepared that you might have to patch it a little bit when you receive it, but I will include some spare pages just in case that happens. Overall though, I really do love this dress. It is certainly not the most practical thing I've ever made, but let's face it, I've been making a lot of practical clothing recently and I think it's about time we start having fun with some more costumey, weird material type outfits that we're doing just for a laugh and not because I actually need new clothes. And on that account, do remember to subscribe if you want to see my other projects that are coming up. This is just the first of many weird material dresses that I am planning on making, so do look forward to those. Oh, also a side note, which is that to get this on, I forgot that the pages would make this a lot stiffer and kind of take away the give that the fabric had. So um, it took me about 20 minutes to do the zip up, which was interesting. It's actually quite comfy now it's on, but 
squeezing myself into it was not the easiest thing. Probably would have gone on in about five minutes had I had an assistant, but sadly Ben is on holiday. That's why I'm here all by my lonesome, meaning I had to struggle a lot. Oh, the tragedy. It's also why in all the reveal shots there's this little ribbon, because I was having to yank it up like that to try and get it done up faster. Another thing about this dress is that it is never going to be quiet if you are walking around because, well, just listen to how crinkly it is. It's like having a cowbell around my waist. The skirt also doesn't have a particularly nice flow to it, which is a bit of a shame because it means I just don't really get the spinning shots that I would like. But it does also keep its shape quite well. So, you know, there's some gives him some takes to having such a stiff outfit. Otherwise, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment telling me well, what should I do with the rest of the book pages? Because I've got about two books worth, which is certainly enough to make at least one more outfit. And until next week, guys, have a beautiful day. Bye.